Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for September 19, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and audience members. Uh, Ms. Berner, if you'd call roll, and as obvious, uh, Mr. Bridge and uh, Mr. Grimm will not be here this evening. Okay, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm is absent. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Six members present. Right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Clark. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Please, Lord, keep thy hand upon this meeting that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders and our troops and our families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we need action on the uh, September 6th council meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Roadwall. Any discussion, council, on those minutes? When you're ready. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. A minute, minutes accepted, 6 0. Thank you very much. Get down to my hearings here. Oh, I'm past it. There it is. All right, and moving on to the city manager's report, Mr. Uh, Kitko will be filling in for Mr. Bridge this evening. Good evening, sir. All right, good evening. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start tonight off with our departmental reports with our police report presented by Deputy Major Sack. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, city members, members of the public. This uh, is for the month of August. Uh, the deputies patrolled 4,828 miles. They took 181 calls. They had 34 reports, 30 assists. We had 11 criminal arrests, two felony arrests, and four misdemeanor arrests. We served five warrants. We had 40 traffic stops. We issued 26 warnings, and we issued 14 moving citations. And we had 534 business checks, and we investigated four traffic crashes. And that's the stats for the month of August. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Council, any questions, comments, feedback for Deputy Major Sack? All right. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it as always. Thank you, Deputy Major Sack. Uh, moving on, we'll move to our fire and EMS report presented by Fire Chief Steve Trustee. Mayor, Council, citizens, for the month of August, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 83 EMS calls in the city. 15 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to fire, five fire-related calls in the city and three in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered either by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 5-2 being on response. We answered three mutual aid calls for Pike Township and four mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments for the Chief Council? Thank you very much, Chief. We appreciate it. So far, so good. Yes. Thank you, Fire Chief, for your report. Uh, moving on down to the finance report uh, with Colleen Harris, our finance director. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mayor, Council, and members of the uh, audience tonight. Our finance reports for the month of August. Revenue was $1,062,566.24. That uh, larger amount was made up mainly with our second half of our uh, Real estate taxes <coughs> the county. The expenses for August are five hundred sixty-three thousand six hundred forty-seven dollars and twelve cents. Our beginning uh, cash from the beginning of the year is six million fourteen thousand two hundred seventy-eight dollars and forty-seven cents. And at the end of August, our ending balance is six million eight hundred eighty-nine thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and nine cents. And all the banks are reconciled. 
The next part of the finance report is the monthly income tax collection. And for the uh, month of August, we received $152,000. $366.38, and the uh, percent, we're at a little over 7% of a higher um, income than we were this time last year. We're monitoring that each month. The new report for the mayor's court for the month of August, they receded $2,372, and that's a combination of fines and court costs. What was that number again? I'm sorry. $2,372 for Thank the month you. of August. Thank you. And that's a total year to date because they just, well, actually, it's only been two months of collecting $5,352. That's Mayor's Court through August. The rest of the reports I submitted are the, the pool report and revenue and expenses, everything else that I normally have. So I can entertain any questions or go into detail on anything else. Any questions for Ms. Harris, Council? Well, no, we accept the finance report. Uh, okay, I got a Go ahead, sir. Uh, since the manager of the pool isn't here, and uh, you may not be able to answer my question. Last year we had a profit of 8,500, and this year we're almost 4,300 in a hole. Am I yes. reading that correctly? Mm -hmm. So that's a, uh, what, 12,000? $13,000 difference? So this time last year in revenue, we're down about 20000 Our expenditures are also down, so that okay. fills the gap a little bit. This won't be the complete number, because we still have vendors out that we need to pay for September. Okay. So actually, we'll have a little bit more expenditures with no revenue. So it'll be further in the red? Mm -hmm. For this season. Okay, so and then we'll have to transfer that amount of money to the from the general fund, correct? So last year we did transfer more. We always do it in the beginning of the year, and it was more than we needed. So the fund balance is still okay. We won't be anticipating a transfer this calendar year. But if we start up our budget next year, it will need a transfer in the beginning of the year to support it. Can you tell me off the top of your head what the transfer was? I'm, I'm looking for it. I don't see it. I didn't hear all of them. Oh, can you tell me what the transfer was that was transferred in last year? 60000 60000 okay. Yes. All right. I do see it now. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And we accept the finance report. Second. <clears throat> Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Pass a 6 0. We need a mayor's court motion yeah. as well. Pardon me? Uh, we need a motion to approve the mayor's court report. So moved. Second. Who was second? Ms. Eggleston. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. <coughs> Zero? Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Harris. Um, moving on for the service report, that was mine. And so, as far as dirt patching, once we get done with the festival, we'll be doing our final. Um, dirt patch for the season and then we'll be getting into leaf pickup which will be right around the corner uh, you'll start you'll see the uh, flyer get put out on our website on the Facebook page and then also on our city website uh, the sweeping head is I want to say it's been completed but I already went out and passed on some touch-up areas uh, for them to come back and hit for us um, we are preparing for a Heritage of Flight Festival. Uh, we deployed our two electronic mobile signs, one down by the New Carlisle Fitness Center and then one up by the American Legion to kind of give a little extra heads up uh, to motorists, you know, coming in that next weekend it is closed. So basically it says Heritage of Flight Festival, uh, 9.30 through 10.2, uh, 571, 235 Main Street, downtown closed. So it's a little bit more uh, visible than the signs, but we still have to get the signs out on excuse me 571 uh, the contractor we had hired had completed the brush clearing on the bike path of brubaker hillside area 
East Lake Avenue right of way and the 235 right away from What a Dog to Hensley Park. And then uh, starting tomorrow and Wednesday, we'll be doing the, uh, the wiring for the decorative lighting downtown to add uh, currently two more speakers that will attach into the current speakers in the downtown area. Um, the one update for the water department is uh, council has passed the ordinance at the last meeting uh, to uh, spend and get well number four's pitless adapter repaired. So we're working on getting that scheduled with a couple different contractors. And then uh, I have no other updates on um, any of the other ones as far as our grants, ADA stuff. Um, we don't have any updates on any of the monies from the county or the state. Um, as far as I know, um, I do have an OPWC grant that has made it through its first step for next year, one for the water department. There is a meeting coming up here, I believe in October and November for kind of the next step, the second step for official approval. So hopefully we'll get some more grant money and that is all I have on my report. I can entertain any questions on it or anything going on with the city. Council, any questions for Mr. Pitko, service director, Mr. Pitko. Um, you touched on it once, I just had a couple. The, uh, so the sweep that, that you would had done contracted out, I know it was not the best job by any means. What did that cost us? Yes, I think it's about 7,400. Okay. And so are they done after doing all the touch-ups or are they still touching up? They're still touching up and then when I got back from a couple days off, I went back out. They did hit a few of those spots, but the, the part that I didn't get to before they left, I went back and hit those, which was some of the old section uh, north of the downtown Main Street, south of the downtown Main Street. Um, there's a few, I think a spot on Lake. I, I got a map I've been marking out to send over to them, but they got probably about a day left to uh, get. What's, um, are you still entertaining the idea? Or, I mean, I know it'll come up to us at the end of the day, but uh, possibly buying our own sweeper? We are. I'm working with uh, another entity um, a, a little bit to see the feasibility of, because uh, the one I did look at, uh, they're running about 150 to 160,000 for a sweeper. Um, so I'm trying to find ways to make it where we don't bear the full cost. And can we help another possible community out? And will this take another full-time employee? Because we're going to do three, maybe four sweeps. So we're thinking it might be 160 man hours. And then add that to what maybe the other entity might need twice a year. So there's a few things going into But yes, I am looking into um, a sweeper for ourselves. Okay. And then the was there any update? If, if you said it, I apologize. Any updates on the grant for... Um not Gail Wood, uh, what road is that? Weird? Fenwick. Fenwick, phase two. Uh, still waiting to, to hear back from the state. Okay, thank you. Sure. I got, I got a question for you, Howie. When we do the main roads like Lake in Maine with the street sweep, is there any way we can put out signs about not allowing cars to park on the street so they have a cleaner path? Because I was watching the gentleman do it, and I mean, he was this. I mean, the entire I know I know with Main Street, uh, usually they get it first thing in the morning. And, and, and honestly, I hate so much to apologize on their behalf, but they did not have it together. Um, they did. They did Troy and a few other places and were in and out. The equipment was constantly broke down. I was on the phone with Cincinnati, which is their headquarters for the company about their Dayton branch. And it's just been a it's been kind of a, a mess. Parking wise, uh, sometimes the cost just uh, to to go around a few cars, it, it's not cheap. I called the city of Springfield and what they pay another company, is really only two companies a suite. Mm -hmm. And the cost to do no parking as they move along, I, I wouldn't say it's the same cost, but it's at least 50% of the cost. So it'd be about another 35, 4,000 to, uh, to do no parking. They do it by quadrant. And then when they're yeah. completely done, then they do it again. Yeah, we did that a and couple the, years ago, did we? No, we just posted it that no parking and you know most of it, gets done with their various sweeps because this time it took them at least four times in each section and each time that car was either not there or it was there the next time and they didn't need to hit it but it's something if we get our own then we then we could probably go out and park it or, or market them I'm, I'm sure it just won't be as detailed because when i would, lived in springfield they had signs almost every couple hundred feet yeah all right anything else for mr okay. kitka mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> on that sweeper thing, who, who's the two companies? I'm just curious. So it's Sweeping Corp of America and, um, just ask me too quick, uh, we had them the year before last. Uh, 
Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Well, City of Springfield uses them. They almost win their bid every year. Okay. I know there's an outfit in Beaver Creek that does it for the big uh, shopping centers down there. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the same. So a lot of these companies do, um, so they have their municipal operators, they have their parking lot operators, and then they have their miller, the people who go around mill grindings, then they have that crew. Uh, it, it's hard to believe that the people who do the parking lots don't know how to do municipal because there's so many obstacles. Um, but no, really there's only two. There is a company that we did approach uh, three or four years ago, much smaller companies, but their trucks are like a, 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 maybe a little less than half the size and just said it, could, it would take us forever and, and the price would just be way higher. They're just not built to do commercial and municipal sweeping. And did you say Troy subs theirs out? Yeah, Troy, Springfield, uh, Tip, uh, almost everybody does almost subs wholeheartedly out. I mean, now City of Springfield does have their own sweeper, but they do their own special areas and then they contract out the rest. Okay. I'm just curious why the bigger ones sub it out, why wouldn't they? If we're looking at buying them, why wouldn't a bigger outfit do that if it's cost effective or they running? Yeah, and the only reason I know about Troy and a few others is he, the, the guy who manages this, was telling me who's all on their list to, to do this season. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So with only two companies out there, are you going to start a third? <laughs> no. You can make some money. I don't need any more to do. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Vaughn. Anyone else? All right, back to you, Mr. Kitko. All right, moving on uh, down to informational items, discussion topics. A uh, joint meeting with Bethel Township, Clark County, and that is to discuss annexation of land adjacent to New Carlisle Elementary for residential development. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, no communication from Bethel Township trustee as of yet. Um, Mayor's court case information uh, reports to council shall begin in October and then any of the historical case counts to be included in the first report since uh, it was requested of Mr. Bridge to um, get that. Uh, medical insurance for the, and I'm gonna guess that's the volunteer fire or v VFIS, I am not real familiar what that is, and other insurance plan renewals are underway. And in the 2023 operating budget, uh, the administrative review discussion start uh, 922 and the goal is to have the budget approved 1231, and I believe Ms. Harris and myself have ours uh, this Thursday and Friday morning to go over my departments, and then she speaks with Mr. Bridge to go over some of the other ones, so we're already starting on that first uh, phase of the budget. And then military uh, banners, so uh, I had an update from uh, Mr. Bridge today, had to switch, uh, we had to switch vendors, so then that put a delay on it, but he said that the banner should be completed anytime from the new vendor already. So those are coming anytime. Sunshine Law Training, Friday, October 7th, Miami, Univers Miami University in, of Oxford, and then uh, a parking pass email. So I'm gonna guess that he sent an email out to council for, about parking pass and information like that. And then on our website is the citywide traffic study results. And I did pull it up today to verify on our newcarlisleohio.gov that you go right in the center of the main page and it will say uh, traffic study and you can click on it and what, look at numbers all day long. Awesome. Just FYI. And then I think that is all I have with the city manager's report. I can entertain any questions on the report or anything else. Council? My only question, sir. Does anybody know uh, what the meeting with Bethel Township is about for that? It's, it's not part of the city. We have, it's annexation, you know. It's the annexation. I thought that was already annexed. Mm -hmm. The one behind the elementary isn't. It's still Bethel. It's Bethel Clark, oh, though. Okay. So we're not crossing county I lines. That one was already annexed. Okay. Nope. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thank you. I just have one, Mr. Kitko, mm -hmm. back to service director. Um, any word on the grant for uh, parks and the grant? I forget what that grant was called. For the one, two of them, the one for the gazebos at the yeah, pool, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the other one for the uh, Carlisle Park basketball court and benches, uh, do, no do not have an update. We haven't got, the state hasn't got back with um, those funds. Those are federal funds, so I'm not sure what the holdup is. Okay. Thank you. It's usually this in the fall time is when you get a lot of answers. Okay. Anyone else? 
All right. Yeah, moving on. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. Committee reports. Uh, there should be none tonight because none, none from those boards are here. So we'll go to comments from members of the public. Do you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything of that nature? Please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address. And please try to keep it to five minutes. Good evening, Council. Julie Reese, 6184 Dayton Brant Road, um, Miami County, just outside town here. So I just wanted to take a few minutes. Um, last week, Mr. Grimm came to a Bethel School Board meeting and asked a couple of very specific questions about the new K-5 that is under construction and will open uh, the fall of next year. Can the you guys hear me? New, Can you guys hear me okay? I just didn't. Would you say the new K-5? It's a K-5. Yeah, we're building a new K-5 and it's going to open fall of next year. So one more year. Um, so I just, so the questions he asked were about that school and the size and if it would hold all the students we have. And um, there was kind of a give and take with the president. And so I just wanted to give a little history because the, I don't think it left with, it kind of left with the message that that school was going to hold all of our students. And I just want to tell you a little bit about how we got here and what kind of the picture is. So we did take money from the OFCC. We're going to partner with them to build the school. So they eventually will give us money. Right now they don't have the money. So they told us it would be seven or eight years. This was uh, three years ago. So um, until we get it. So we have to fund the school ourselves, and then eventually we'll get paid back some money, which will be used to build another building because eventually we're going to have to tear down everything we have except for that new high school, which opened in 2017. And it was full when it opened. So just want to just want to give you some of this. So um, there's. Right now, so the K-5 will hold 1,000 students. It's being built to hold 1,000 students. Right now, this year, we have 943 K-5 through five students. We got 244 new students this year, and it's usually roughly half our K-5, maybe, maybe a little higher than half, but um, not too much. So um, we've been averaging like 120 to 130 students. So this is an exceptionally high year partly because um, some families took in about 60 refugee kids, so they were not planned for, not in carriage trails, house, you know, they're not, didn't buy a house and all that. So um, a lot of students this year, so just using the 120 number though, that would be an additional um, 60 plus elementary kids next year. So it is gonna open full or above capacity. And the reason I say maybe above is because right now, we don't have the money to finish out the fifth grade wing in the K through five school. So it may open as a K through four, which means we'd be missing like half a dozen classrooms. And um, <clears throat> the plan all along has been until we get the money from the OFCC to build the next building, uh, we would put new students that were coming back into the old elementary school that we just moved those kids out of. So one thing to remember though is that as those kids keep coming up until our you know, seven years we might get the money, it takes three years after that to build a new building, minimum of three. So we're talking at least six years after we open the school next year of still getting new kids with no new space. So um, we're already over capacity in the schools that we're in of course. We have um, middle school is also overcrowded and high school is crowded. So some of the kids will backfill into the elementary starting next year already because the, we're gonna get more middle schoolers and high schoolers which will have to fill in that space. So um, right now we have trailers. That's eight rooms of trailers that are rented. So we'd have to give those up eventually or get more. And the kids are sitting in bleachers in the gym while PE class is in session. We took the old library and made two classrooms out of it just by partitioning. Um, we're using the kitchen now for the library since we took the library. Uh, we've converted every small space that we had into a classroom, including storage closets. Um, you know, sometimes they're just intervention rooms and sometimes they were big enough to be small classrooms. Uh, the music room this year was converted into two classrooms by just putting up some cabinet partitions. We have teachers on carts right now, so not everybody has a classroom. Also with the influx of students this year, we have 
um, sometimes 30 to 32 kids in a classroom. So I just wanted you to know all this because it kind of sounded like we were going to have enough room when we opened this new K-5, but we're not. And even down the road, so when the OFCC, when, <laughs> they give us the money, um, like I said, that'll be, they said seven or eight years, and then three years after that to build the school. So we're talking at least six years from next year, assuming it's on the seventh year. So if we get 120 new students a year, 120 to 130, uh, that, that would be approximately 30 new classrooms of kids during that time. And once the second building is open, it will have to hold that 750 plus what we currently have in the middle school and high school from next year. So we're talking about a new school that's going to have to house um, 1750 to 1800 people, assuming the 120, 120 to 130 remains as it is. So I just wanted to let you know that, just so you'd get, <laughs> that you'd understand that we're not swimming in space over there, and um, that for the people that stood up here and said that, that it will hurt the school, um, I just wanted you to understand that that wasn't just a made up thing, that we really are crowded right now, and there's no place to put anybody. I'm sure that's my five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, anyone else? Moving on. I, I have a question. I guess I better go. Yes. <laughs> you always wait till the last second, you know. That's all right. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentiss. Um, I was wondering, I saw that the, that new building for the, like this one, was going to be 400 and some thousand dollars. Is that Yes, right. we have budgeted four thirty four hundred thirty five thousand. Okay. Not out of our pocket though. Now, does all that money come from grants or just part of it? That was my question. Right now, we have it slated to be. It's I think it's it's a hundred percent grant, but we have a potential to maybe spend like ten thousand. There might be a ten percent because of engineering, but ninety nine percent of it should be covered by a uh, federal CDBG grant. Most uh, it's from old COVID funds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just thought that that seemed like an awful lot of money for a little place like that when you can buy a three or four bedroom house for a lot less. <laughs> I mean, I didn't understand why it cost so much. Uh, commercial uh, construction is quite significant more than residential. Uh, whether you're just like this shelter house is logs and everything. This was 150,000 back in 2001, 2002. Okay, I, w I was just mm -hmm. curious because I wasn't mm -hmm. sure about whether all the money come from the grants. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Janelle. Right, anyone else? All right, moving on to resolutions done, ordinances. Ms. Perner, please. All right, our first one is ordinance 2022-38, an ordinance employing a director of law and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for legal services. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance is to enter into a one year um, and it would automatically renew and but also there is either party uh, with up this uh, upon 60 days can give written notice to terminate as well on the last page you can see that there are the rates for the various uh, years and then what a paralegal you know um, would get what we would get charged for paralegal work and again this would be to have uh, keep Mr. Jeffries on is our director of law, which is required by charter. Council, any questions, comments? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes 6-0. Um, ordinance 2022-39, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purchase and installation of a natural gas backup generator at the City of New Carlisle Municipal Building. So moved. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance is uh, pretty self-explanatory, but this would be to add a natural gas generator at the back corner of the building. Uh, we've been running into uh, some transformers going out, uh, heating and air issues, and 
most everything we have now is uh, super delicate with the new computers and the servers in the the cloud space that we're using we need a backup generator because i noticed now we've been working and some things don't get saved where this will have an auto, have a battery to the computer then the generator will kick in and then we don't have to worry about heating and air we'll be able to you know continue working any questions council so the computers and servers and i'll kind of ask him, mr other kitco back there as well <laughs> um, uh, are they they're not they've got battery backup or they do not they they do which can get you a couple minutes to maybe up to five minutes of either that time to shut down or that generator to kick in which the generator has an auto transfer switch which should happen within a split second who's doing the um the install uh ledford electric okay is this um am i allowed to ask him a direct question if you want i mean if you have a technical question about anything yeah is, I mean, is, if without a backup generator, uh, I mean, does it seriously put our servers and computers at risk? Yeah, you're shutting off equipment without. Okay. Now. All right. Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. I do that all the time. Huh? I do that all the time. I know. I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyone else? All right. When you're ready, Miss Burner. You were the second, correct? Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 6 0. We have Ordinance 2022 40, an ordinance amending Ordinance 2021 36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. Seven. Give me a second. I'm sorry. I was Ms. Okay. Um, and an explanation of this ordinance is, uh, again, there was another amendment after the director of law, Mr. Jeffries, had uh, spoke with various, uh, the law enforcement division and um, the uh, clerk of courts. Uh, back towards in the back of your handout, you'll see where some of the uh, misdemeanor ones, misdemeanor twos, and those uh, because they could go to so easily go over to the county court system. Why even, uh, I'm gonna guess why even try them here. So you'll see the few things that are sh uh, strike, they struck and out, <laughs> have been striked out um, under general offenses, uh, criminal, and then general offenses, alcoholic beverages, and then uh, related to persons, assault, aggravated menacing, uh, criminal mischief under related to property. And I think that is, what is it? So it's just striking a few. All right, council, any questions, comments? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwall? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 6 0. Um, the next few are just read only. We have ordinance 2022-42 introduction tonight public hearing and action on september 28th 2022 an ordinance changing the zoning of approximately 115.3 acres at 8805 east new carlisle road bethel township miami county ohio from a2 general agricultural district bethel township to rpud residential planned unit development and approving a preliminary planned unit development plan contingent upon successful annexation. Ordinance 2022-43, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 28, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a pre-annexation agreement with Cat 5 Development LLC and the current property owners. Ordinance 2022-44, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on September 28, 2022. An ordinance regarding the arrangement for provision of improvements for an RPUD planned unit development district. Ordinance 2022-45, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on October 3rd, 2022. An ordinance amending chapter 850 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding peddlers. Ordinance 2022-46, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on October 3rd, 2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 648 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle 
for the purpose of addressing panhandling. Ordinance 2022-47, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on October 3rd, 2022, an ordinance amending section 220.01 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle to increase the city manager's dollar amount threshold for entering into contracts. Ordinance 2022-48, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on October 3rd, 2022. An ordinance amending chapter 220 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle for the purpose of adding a section for an assistant city manager. Ordinance 2022-49, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on October 3rd, 2022. An ordinance naming Howard Kitko as the director of public service assistant city manager. Would you like me to read the? You need a break? <laughs> a break? I can keep going. You need some water? <laughs> yeah, I know long today uh, additional city business city council special meeting monday september 26 2022 at 6 p.m here at smith park shelter house to discuss charter amendments council retreat and cemetery operations <coughs> uh, city council special meeting wednesday september 28 2022 at 6 30 p.m here at smith park shelter house to act on the ddc residential development plan and zoning change is that it because i didn't is, was that all that's left? I don't have yeah. the actual agenda pulled up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. An open discussion. So, um, does council have anything they need to discuss? Other city <laughs> Um, do you have something? To Two things I just wanted to mention. I was wanting to mention it to Randy, but I'll just mention it just to get it out there. We need to uh, get with Mr. Bridge and set up a town hall before the meeting or before the calendar year is over. So, something we need to think about. Maybe bring it up to him at the next meeting when he's a around get that I'm gonna make a note of that. I'll, I'll make mention and then um, two uh, as mr. Kit Godar mentioned so the heritage flight festival is coming up at the end of the month the uh, 30th the first and the second and uh, just for those of you who haven't been around for 18 years obviously traffic around town gets a little crazy because it's you know we've got the whole Main Street shut down so just you know as you come into that weekend prepare for that uh, traffic will be slow coming through taking the side streets, Church Street, and things of that nature. So, anyone else? Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, when do you think of next month or November for the uh, town hall? Uh, let's see, October. I'd say November, because October is going to be a little busy right. with some yeah. of the special meetings. And uh, if you want to uh, give Mr. Bridge some dates to look at sure. uh, at this point, and Mr. Kiko can relay those dates to him, and then he can email us if they weren't. And I would like to. Um, I, get their I know we don't. I know we don't. In the past, we we don't get a big turnout for these. But maybe this year, with you know all the potential or possible developments going on, or just you know in general, just the things that are taking place, uh, you know, that maybe we could try and make it a little bit more better presented. Not that we've done a bad job, but normally it's just kind of a laid back council meeting more or less. Maybe we could step it up a little bit, make it feel a little bit more polished with everything that's going on. And I don't know if we would need to hold it somewhere else or continue to do it here, but yeah. Uh, are you uh, considering still on Monday nights? I'm open with it. I mean, Monday's been the tradition. The 14th I mean, and 28th, because we have council meetings yet to. Right. Uh, Mondays of November. And then if you were to go to Tuesday, I'd Well, it would be the 7th and the 21st, wouldn't it? 7th and 21st is the two council meetings. Right. We're going to do oh. a council meeting? No, no, I, mis I misunderstood how you were saying it. So you're saying the 14th, 28th. 14th and 28th for the, for the uh, town. Yeah, hall. yeah, okay. Yeah, either one of those is fine with me. Uh, yeah. I know the 28th, well, I won't be able to make that one, but I just step on. Um, so maybe do it earlier in the month away from the holiday. Uh, yeah, in, the, in the past, well, you guys have done it at 6 p.m. the same night of your regular council. Yeah. Right, but I, we've also I've also gotten some people say that it felt too rushed. You know that we we were only doing it a half hour ahead of time, so that if you know a lot of times we would only have three or four people show up, and that's enough time. But if we were to have 10, 15, 20, 50, we would need more than a half hour. I'll have to go back and look at my last year's town hall because I know a lot of town hall is your year in review. Right. And a little bit of current so i'll find out what you guys were doing last year and what how randy you guys all thought about and i'll just make mention uh 
on, on some dates. I just know that's not a that's opening day. Well, it's good to hear about Tuesday night too. If the money's if the money's gotcha. <laughs> opening day for what? <laughs> it's Ball a cardinal game? sin to miss opening day on hunting season. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not important. That doesn't show influence our <laughs> calendar any. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I make the motion that the uh, service director attends our. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> And then, Deputy, I'll need you to walk me to my car. <laughs> I'm busy. You're busy. Oh, thanks. What do you say? I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to get to the car before he gets a hold of me. Well, do you want to, do you want to let him uh, speak with Mr. Bridge before yeah. we... Yeah, I'll do that, and then I'll also bring up that if the council meeting happens to be a short one, then the town hall can be the big portion of it. So you well, do we, your council meeting at... Switch, switch around around early. Exactly. Yeah, and then do your town hall for the hour or two, right. whatever you think. But we have to have December 5th. Mm-hmm. So... You know, we never know when the meeting or council meeting will be short, like tonight, or three hours long. Yep. Generally, the first one yeah. is the shorter. Of yeah, the we have no reports. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Well, yeah, if you want to put a bug in his ear. Sure. Like, Absolutely. And then just give him the few ideas at longer, possibly, yeah. uh, location, possibly, just those yep. few things. I think the 28th would be awesome. I just <laughs> can't go with that. What's that? The 28th. Of December, sure. <laughs> All right, anything else in your discussion, Council? Oh, I got two of them shaking their heads no at me. <laughs> you motion to excuse Dale. Oh, yes, please. So move. Motion from second. Mr. Bond and second by Mr. Okay. Lindsay to excuse Mr. Grimm. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Pass the six. Yeah, here. executive. And then. Ma'am? Um, is there anything that we can do about the banners and signs that people have hanging on fences and porches with profanity? Nope. Nope. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. It's been, look, it's been talked to by Jacob numerous times. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, some of them, it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Can if, um, constitution, freedom of speech. Yeah, but you could tighten up. You could maybe you tighten, tighten up, up a different ordinance. way. You could tighten up an ordinance on banners Easily. and signage. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would, per, you know, that would more or less stop them from putting, a, you know, but then again, out there. yeah. So maybe looking at. I'm sure there's other cities that have had to have dealt with it. We would just have to kind of do some homework. Okay. All right. Anything else? Be good, girl. Are we going into an executive session? No. Nope. Nope. No executive session. No. It's all easy. No. Yeah. All right. I didn't catch the second. I think it was first. It first. It was the second. Oh, second. 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 No, I wasn't. No. Second bond. I just wanted to know why it's executive session. Yeah, right. it's always on there. It's always on there. Really? Mm-hmm. Councilman yeah. Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman so, Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Six zero. We are adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.